Welcome to our review on mitosis. First thing we're going to consider then is a process called the cell cycle. And what the cell cycle is, is a series of stages that the cells are going to undergo as they're going through division. And I've given you the diagram on the right there that's the simplified version of it. So we've got four main phases to it. You've got G1, S, G2 and M. So G1 is a growth phase, S is the DNA synthesis phase, G2 more growth and preparation for mitosis, and then finally M is the mitosis phase. What we find then is that when the cell isn't dividing, then the DNA is actually spread out in these really long strings, kind of like you've just got a whole load of string and rubbed it all together in a big messy knot. Before the cell can actually undergo division, then it's going to have to grow and replicate all of those other subcellular structures. So things like the mitochondria and the ribosomes that are vital to the cells functioning. They've all got to be replicated before the cell can divide because each one's going to need them. Once we've done that, the DNA has to be replicated and it condenses to form these X shaped chromosomes that we're familiar with. Just because I don't like just saying DNA replicates and not giving you any further explanation, because I think that's a little bit poor, then we're jumping ahead to a little bit of work we're going to see in more detail in topic six, which is the structure of our DNA. So for our DNA to actually replicate, then it's going to have to unzip first of all. So we've got our two strands that are then opened up, and then we've got three DNA bases that will pair up with their complementary base pairs which are A and T and C and G, to form two identical strands. Before we actually come on to the actual process of mitosis, then we should have a little bit of an understanding about where this happens. And the key thing to remember about mitosis is this is how our normal body cells are dividing. So the way I always use to help people remember is mitosis happens in mitoses. Key thing here when you're writing mitosis is it's very similar to another process we're going to come on to later on in our biology. So the spelling is critical. So make sure you know how to spell mitosis and you remember that this is in our normal body cells. What we then generate at the end of mitosis are two genetically identical daughter cells. So we're creating clones of our parent cell. And mitosis itself is really important to us in terms of growth and repair. If we now consider what happens in mitosis itself, the first thing that's going to happen is the nucleus is going to break down and the chromosomes line up along the centre of the cell called the equator, as you can see in the fourth diagram along there. Once they've all lined up in the equator, then they're pulled apart to the opposite poles or ends of our cell by the spindle fibers, which you can see in the fifth diagram along. Once that's actually happened, then a new nucleus is going to form around those new sets of chromosomes, as you can see in the final diagram at the end there. One of the things that they could ask you to do on the exam is to identify some cells that are undergoing mitosis and describe what's happening based on light microscope images. So we're all good and fine at identifying these from the lovely clear diagrams you get in the textbooks, but you really need to look at the images from light microscopes to be able to identify what's happening. So hopefully what I've done at the bottom there by giving you the light microscope images at the very bottom and then the corresponding typical diagram from your textbook above it is gonna help you to identify that. So for example, if we have a look at the one in the middle, then we can see that all the chromosomes are lined up along the very center there along our equator. So we know that that's a cell that's undergo mitosis because the chromosomes are lined up along the equator. If you look at the next one along, then we can see that they're starting to be pulled to the opposite poles and you can just about make out the faint lines of our spindle fibers there. So again, the cell is undergo mitosis as the chromosomes are being pulled to the opposite poles of the cell. So do look at a range of different light microscope pictures on the internet just to get more familiar with them. When we're considering how long this whole process of the cell cycle actually takes, 
then it's not one given value because it's going to vary with the different cell types and the conditions that they're actually under. However, if you're given the right information, you can work out the duration of a stage. So to help you understand how to do this, I've given you an example question here. So in a tissue sample of 120 cells, a scientist counts 42 that are in the replication stage of the cell cycle. A complete cell cycle for this tissue lasts 24 hours. How long are the cells in the replication stage for? So there's three steps to this calculation. First one, we need to calculate the proportion of cells in the relevant stage, which in this one is the replication stage. So in our question, we're told that 42 are in the replication stage and we've got a sample of 120. So our proportion is 42 120ths. The second step is we need to convert our total cell time into minutes because we've been given it as 24 hours. So hopefully we know there's 60 minutes in an hour. And so 24 times 60 is 1,440 minutes. And then in order to actually work out how long those cells are in the replication stage for, we multiply the proportion by the total cell time. So our 42 over 120 times 1,440 gives us 504 minutes. Hopefully at the end of this video, we can describe the cell cycle and its stages. And we can also describe what happens during the mitosis part in detail. You should also be able to identify which cells are undergoing mitosis from light microscope drawings and calculate the duration of any particular stage of the cell cycle.